Hey everyone, Jarek here. Breakdown is an original Xbox game developed by Namco. Alright, hold on, I have to play this. Man, it's been a while since I've seen that. Okay, Breakdown. Breakdown is a first-person action game. I struggle to classify it as a first-person shooter because although it technically is a first-person shooter, that's not really its focus. A more accurate description would be a first-person fighting game with first-person gunfights. It'll make more sense, I'll elaborate later, stick with me. My first impression of Breakdown was, wow, these animations are really good for an OG Xbox game released in 2004. The rest of the game doesn't look too shabby either. Character models are highly detailed for a console game of its time, you see your body at all times with no cutscenes to break immersion, environments are highly detailed, and look believable. Half the time. The other half the time you're walking down grey hallways that are very bland. Breakdown also sporadically does a pretty bad job showing you where you need to go. I get up here? I am amazed that I noticed that. Imagine how easy that is to miss. That little beam, the same one as that beam, and everything else in this room. Wait, are you serious? I'm so upset. <laughs> Alright, here's where I had to go. You know this area I was looking at this whole time? God fucking damn it. <laughs> Shit. The animations, however, are by far the most interesting thing about this game's visual presentation. There is an animation for everything in this game, and I really do mean everything. In order to pick up an object, doesn't matter if it's ammo or health off an enemy, doesn't matter if it's a keycard on a table, doesn't matter if it's to push a button on a door, whatever it is, you will have to press the X button to lift your hand, press the X button again to do that command, and if you're picking up an item, press the X button AGAIN to stop staring at it like a dingus. Your character will also have diabetes and kidney stones by the end of this game. Wow, does he like soda. While this is very cool and unique for an OG Xbox game, it's also predictably intrusive. They're cool at first, but get old fast. After every battle, you have to walk up to every corpse and press the X button three times per body. To make things even worse, you're not invincible during these animations and you can't cancel them. So if you start getting attacked, you're dead. This carries over to the combat, but I need to give more context for all of this happening. You play as Derek Cole, waking up in a science facility with amnesia. You're a guinea pig for some sort of experiment. And even though you're cooperative, they poison your hamburger anyway. What a bunch of dicks. But before anything can be explained, all hell breaks loose and you're rescued by a woman named Alex after she forces you to puke out the burger in first person. Okay, now it's time to lose your lunch. <laughs> No relation to this Alex, by the way. Kind of amusing that two games with female psychics by the name of Alex came out the same year. It's genuinely a coincidence, obviously. Games aren't made that quickly. Anyway, the enemy are something called the Talon. Apparently, there's a research facility with thousands of super soldiers. The goal of this project is to have one strong soldier control them all. I wonder where I've heard that before. Okay, Breakdown came out first, and it's not an original idea, but all jokes aside, it's presented pretty well. There's even these hallucinatory moments that certainly kept my attention. He's having hallucinations. Alright! Throughout the course of this game, you will gain more powers and remember more of your history, and apparently, become the savior of humanity. Please, help us. 
What if I just said no here? What would happen? Leave it to me. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody stood up and clapped. So how does that go for you? Well, I don't know. Stopped playing the game about four hours in and decided that was enough. It was simultaneously one of the most interesting early 2000s experiments and also one of the most unfair games I've ever played. What's most frustrating is that when this game worked, it really worked. And when it didn't, it really didn't. Let's first start with the gunplay. There are guns in this game. However, they are the most inaccurate weapons I have ever seen in a shooter, and that's not hyperbole either. There's no traditional aiming, just lock on, which is a good and bad thing at the same time. It's a good thing because sensitivity is awful. Aim acceleration feels like it kicks in immediately, resulting in aiming feeling very slippery. Even if it did feel good, vertical aiming is a lot more sensitive than horizontal aiming for who knows what reason. Thankfully, lock-on alleviates those issues, just to create other ones. The lock-on is incredibly sticky. You can swap between targets and cancel it altogether, but I still find myself 180-ing to targets I didn't want to attack turning my back to bigger threats. Anyway, since these guns are incredibly inaccurate, you were forced to get up close. Until you unlock the ability to shield bullets, you were forced to either take damage and run through their gunfire, or take shots and just hope a few of them land. But gunplay honestly isn't too important, as this game focuses far more on hand-to-hand -hand combat. This game controls like a first-person Tekken. Pressing certain directions on the left analog stick, plus either the left or right trigger, allows you to string together different attacks. Clicking in on the left thumbstick allows you to block. And again, the really frustrating thing is that the system actually works. Most enemies cannot take damage from traditional guns, so you're forced into hand-to-hand -in -hand combat. Now, I actually run a local fighting game scene, and I've been a PR player since 2017. They're playing catch! Oh, oh! What happened to Rival? Come on! Oh. Rip City. Wait. Did... Okay, okay, this game is Rivals of Ether and not a traditional fighting game, but my point here is I do enjoy this kind of system. It is satisfying to learn your combo trees, play footsies, and improve. This system works really well in a 1v1 scenario. In fact, I would love a competitive fighting game like this. Again, it reminds me of a first-person Tekken. Problem is, you're almost never getting one-on-one. -on -one. When there are multiple enemies nearby, the system completely falls apart. Remember when I said you're not invincible during animations? Yeah, well, you were going to be stuck in these long animations with enemies quickly surrounding you, resulting in you getting hit in the back because lock-on wouldn't cooperate. Then you get stun-locked, unable to prevent your death because you made one mistake. Oh my god. I'm in fire, taking damage as I'm on the ground. That's cool! Or maybe you didn't even make a mistake, you just opened a fucking door! I literally could- I literally couldn't avoid taking damage there. The moment I was done with the animation, like, I was taking damage as the animation was ending. And then I was blocking and died anyway. The shit. Another issue I frequently ran into was feeling like my moves should have more range. Depth is hard to tell in a first-person game, so I often whiffed when I felt I shouldn't have. That's on top of all the trial and error sequences in this game. Here, dodge these lasers, don't get clipped, because it instantly kills you no matter how much health you have. And here's the room that made me say, alright, I've seen enough. Two strong enemies, with three also strong enemies firing lasers in the background. Guns can't hurt them, and you don't have any ranged attacks aside from one energy projectile that requires you to stand in place while charging it. This is only 40% of the way through the game, and on normal difficulty. This game gets way more difficult after this, judging off of YouTube comments. So would I recommend this game? Well, as you can probably tell, no. Breakdown is incredibly ambitious, and I commend them for experimenting, but ultimately it really didn't work. I do not get the same enjoyment I get from, say, Doom Eternal. When I'm tossed a difficult arena in that game, I can get into this flow state, and it feels incredibly rewarding to succeed. In Breakdown, it feels like every animation happens in slow motion, with combat weighted against the player in incredibly unfair ways due to severe jank. The only reason to play this game is out of sheer curiosity for its experimentation. But for me personally, 
This game is just fucking irritating to play. And thank all of you for watching this video. Right above me are my YouTube members. They get to see my videos at least one week ahead of time. So if you want to join that, you can click the join button next to my name, or you can just look in the video information. Big thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch. I had someone raid with like 90 people, so that was pretty cool. Thank you. I forget your name, but thank you. You know who you are. If you want to follow on Twitch, the link is over there in the bottom right. If you want to follow me on Twitter, the link is uh, over there somewhere. But thank all of you for watching. I'll see you next time.